The ground is a lossy material. If we were to use table 7-1 to calculate the attenuation constant for the ground, we would get alpha is equal to 0.71. To help us understand what this number means, it is helpful to calculate the skin depth of the ground. The skin depth is 1 over alpha, which is 1.4 meters. This means that if we model 1.4 meters into the ground, any wave propagating to that depth, say 1.4 meters, will have attenuated by a factor of 1 over e, which is about 36% of the amplitude that the wave has here just below the Earth's surface, the ground surface. So one idea is to model several skin depths into the ground. If we do this, then the wave will attenuate before it reaches the PEC on that side of the grid. So somewhere here, there still has to be a PEC. In other words, instead of implementing an absorbing boundary condition on this side of the grid, we can get away with just modeling a thick ground and allowing the ground to absorb the wave. If we took this approach, how many skin depths thick would we need to make the ground in our model? Well, if we let the wave attenuate to the level of the reflection that we can expect from a PML, down by, say, a factor of 10,000 or so, the ground thickness would prevent reflections as well as a PML would. It turns out that after eight skin depths, a wave propagating through the ground will have attenuated to e to the minus eight, which is about 3.3 uh, e to the minus four. So this is eight skin depth. So this is on the order of what the reflections that we could expect from a PML. But we don't need to make the ground eight skin depths thick in our model. We can actually make it four skin depths thick. Because by the time the wave reaches the PEC edge, re uh, reflects and propagates back to the snow region again, it will have gone through a total of eight skin depths of the ground. Since each skin depth is 1.4 meters, four skin depths is about 5.6 meters. So that's how much ground we would need. Converted to grid cells, this is 5.6 meters divided by delta, which is about 1,300 grid cells. So you can see that if we were worried about computational efficiency, it would be better to just put a PML on this side of the grid, since that would only be about 10 cells thick. However, I'm not going to have us do that here, because if you look back on our notes for the type of PML we've developed so far, the PML parameters change based on what material is adjacent to the PML. So it's a bit more work to figure out how to implement a PML on this side of the grid than it was for the other side of the grid, which had free space adjacent to the PML. Putting all this together, I calculate that the surface of the ground starts at about I equal 11,658 grid cells. So if the ground is 1,300 cells, thick, this means we should set I max would be 12,958. Here's a diagram summarizing all the distances in the grid. For now, go ahead and program in the human body and its location, but leave it commented out of the code, because we're first going to test the model without the presence of the body. Last, I want to mention that it's going to take a while for any electromagnetic waves to be generated and propagate throughout the grid. So let's start by setting Nmax a little bit higher than it is right now. Let's set it equal to 55,000 time steps. We can always adjust this later. Once you've programmed the materials into the model, we can try to run it. However, before we run the model, it's a good idea for us to have an idea of what we should expect to see so that we can gain some confidence in that we've implemented the model correctly. So what do you expect to happen when you run the simulation? To help us figure this out, spend a minute and calculate the reflection coefficient for the different material interfaces in the model. 
Then based on the reflection coefficients of each interface and where they are located, we should have an idea of what will happen to the wave generated by the source as it comes into contact with each of the different materials in the grid. Remember the reflection coefficient is eta2 minus eta1 over eta2 plus eta1, where material 2 is the material the wave is reflecting off of and material 1 is the material the wave is incident from or already propagating in. I went ahead and calculated the characteristic impedance for each material in the model for you and that's right here and I used I used the equation that's listed in table 7-1. So now just calculate the reflection coefficients of each material interface and predict what will happen to the wave as it propagates around in the grid.